Basically, this is a super turbo. Uh, it's a 14 liter Detroit diesel engine. It's a, mar it's a marine build, so its stock power output is 825 horsepower at about 2100 RPM. We have taken it from that point uh, to 2400 horsepower at 2700 RPM. And once we turn on our straight shot water methanol system, it goes to 2800 horsepower. So what we've leveraged is a package we did for the Navy on some uh, combatant craft. These are boats uh, that, that use engines that we designed back in 2002. And those are Cummins-based 780 horse marine engines. Now, we just tested it down San Diego way, uh, the, the concept of a V8 marine engine with a supercharger feeding two turbochargers. The whole idea is to burn all the diesel fuel and no smoke. When I met Mike on the, on the mountain two years ago, there was a smoke issue. And I said to Mike, that's horsepower in the air. When you inject fuel into an engine, it says in the Bible, you use it there. You don't put it in the air. That's nothing to be proud about. So I, I kind of, over a period of months, convinced him that we had a system that worked. So we've got an 8.3 liter screw supercharger, which is that noisy rascal you just heard. And it's pretty special on Pike's Peak because they really hear you coming. The supercharger feeds into a large turbocharger that we nicknamed that turbocharger Kong. And the turbocharger feeds into a, a large charger cooler in the nose of the truck. There's water methanol throughout to control temperatures and air density and make the, the thing run clean and safe from the bottom to the top. We also leverage the system to cool the brakes, to mist the intercooler, to super chill it, all based on a closed loop temp sensing system. So there's a lot of technology that's kind of new. The super turbo thing is, is not a new invention for us. You just don't see people doing it. It's, it turns out it's kind of tough to manage. So we've come up with a methodology to, to, to run the system, to compensate for the altitude change. This, to me, is a test bed for uh, numerous things. Uh, we want to look at differing fuel types. Uh, I, want, I want to do a hybrid version of this. That's really big on my plate is the thing will be a lot quicker off the turn two years from now after we put the hybrid set up on. Uh, I heard it so, here first, folks. <laughs> yeah. The hybrid is a performance tool, by the way. Uh, you know, it's especially off turns are coming out of the hole. So, what you're looking at is a test bed for us and for Detroit Diesel and for Daimler and Freightliner. Uh, there's a lot of leveraging new technologies. Uh, this coming year we will run this 60 series engine and then go to new technology. Uh, and I think Bosch is going to join us in that effort on the fuel injection technology side because it's all new, uh, what, Don, what Daimler has come up with. I think as we see some of the natural gas coming into place, you know, what Gail's done with the uh, water methanol injection, there's propane, there's all kinds of alternatives out there and I think that maybe the truck of the future possibly the car of the future is going to have some sort of multi-fuel situation. Exactly. So to be able to take it into an extreme environment like Pikes Peak, I also ran Bonneville for five years and we're having conversations about what a future technology innovation truck in a Bonneville environment might look like. Um, that's some fascinating stuff where it feels like you're doing more than just racing and having a good time. It's, it's really testing this stuff, developing it.